didn't become a body holy fled and flooded with God himself. Amen. Amen. Well, this talks about this love, not how much you love people, but how much he loved you. But once you find out how much he loves you, you're able to love people. You can't give away what you don't have. So this is where we're finding out how much he loves us so we can turn that love around and love somebody else that's unlovable. Amen. You haven't did anything, just loving the people that love you. A Christian loves people that people don't, that's unlovable. A Christian can get in an unlovable situation and still show Jesus. So this is what we're trying to get. We're trying to get to, we don't want to just have the, the Christian t-shirt. We don't just want the bumper sticker on, on your car. We don't want to ride through by your house and you got a whole Jesus is Lord carved into your grass. We thank that God for that. But we want to actually be experiencing and walking in love. You know, what church you go to? Dunamis, as though that's something. It don't matter what church you go to. It's the church in you. Amen. Amen. So what we got to do is work on that as Christian, because that's not automatic. And you can come to church all your life, come, you know, you know, love God, fall out, mess up my copy, do all this, run around the church and everything. But if you don't have this love in your heart, then you don't have what, it, you, 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 you're not even ready to be filled and flooded. I want to be filled and flooded so when I show up, my presence leaves. And you know, go into a room, amen, where they all talking about you on, in, on the break time. You just show up in the lunch room, and all of a sudden the presence of the Lord just show up, and all of them get convicted and want to change and want to want to say I'm sorry. Why, 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 why? Because when you're walking in this type of love that Jesus walked in, it, com it demands attention. So this is what we after. So I, I'm more, this is what I'm talking about this. Hey Amen. I'm not concerned about talking about nothing there. I'm not concerned about getting a 10 on my sermon. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get the soldiers in the army of the Lord to walk in love. But you can't walk in love until you first find out how much he loves you. Because somebody sitting here today, right here today, thank God mad at you because something you did. Well, maybe I'm going through this because, you know, I did do this. Well, in the Old Testament, when you do good, you get good. Yeah, in the Old Testament, maybe that might be true. But in the New Testament, after Jesus died, that can't be no more. He said, I won't ever be angry with you again. God is not trying to get you. Let me tell you something, honey. If God wanted to get you, you'd already been God. <laughs> Amen. No, he's a loving God. He's a loving. So this is what we're talking about. I want to saturate this place with love. I know sometimes you can talk about love, and some people say, well, you know, I heard that in Sunday school. I heard that before. I know all I can know about love. No, we're not talking about, no. see, there's two types of love. We're not talking about loving in your head. We're not talking about the knowledge you know how to love in your head. We're talking about an intimate, personal relationship, a revelation of love in your spirit. Because if you have that in your spirit, then nobody can offend you. If you have that in your spirit, you'll walk right in the mix of lions and go to sleep because perfect love casts out fear. Yeah. You won't be fearing about nothing that you're going through today if you really understand what I'm talking about today. Because perfect love will cast out fear. You, love, you know he loves you so much, you're not even worrying about it. They said, didn't I tell you that the report said you bought the die in three days and you fall out laughing? Why are you laughing? Because I'm laughing because you don't know who loved me. <laughs> you don't understand. This ain't about, he loved me. I don't have to perform. I don't have to do anything right. I don't have to confess the word. I don't have to pray. I don't have to live holy for him to love me. I do that as a byproduct of what he, I found out how he loved me. But I'm not loving him so he can love me. Old Testament, we had to do that. New Testament, he decided to love you before you even was lovable. Yeah. Can you imagine that God loved you even when you were unlovable? He loved us. That's why when he first loved us, that's why we can love him. He's looked at you and loved you, each one of us in here, with an everlasting love. He didn't care what you said. He don't care where you went last night. Matter of fact, he knew we were going to do it, but he went on 2,000 years ago and died for you and shed his blood for you, and yet before you even decide to become a fetus, oh, Lord. <laughs> I've already set it up, my love for you. All you got to do is receive me. Everybody here trying to do something to get God to love them, trying to come to church, get God to love them, trying to come to Bible study every year. <laughs> Not every Wednesday, you know, every year. 
Amen. Amen. But you're trying to do something. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know if you understand it. He already loves you. Yes. And here's what the Lord showed me. How can you really let them understand my love? He says, show them forgiveness. Because forgiveness is a part of the God kind of love. Amen. You can't walk in his love unless you walk in forgiveness. Amen. And you don't know how much he forgave you. That's why you won't forgive others. Amen. There's a story he showed me that I, it, just, it blew my mind when I started um, looking at it and digging into it a little bit more. Wait a minute. Oh, just look at the woman with the out of master box. Let's look at this for a second. I want to show you something. Look at Luke um, 7. And I like this dress down. I ain't hot. <laughs> look at Luke 7. I'm going to say, I'm hot. Well, that's you. you I'm, I'm, a, I'm up here with all these lights and everything, you know, sweating. But I'm good. Praise God. How many know God love us? Yeah. And because he loves us, how many know he's going to change this situation soon? How many know, we might not know what's going on, but God is doing something behind the scenes. So he love us. You know, he love me. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what bad report come. God love me. Since he love me, he don't want me to be like this. And so look at somebody and say, God is doing something behind the scenes that we don't even know. Say that. You got to believe that. You got to just be, be able to take some, be able to, be able to stand and just trust God through the storm, amen. Through the, through the heat, through the fire, amen. amen. Knowing that there's a change coming, amen. But we got to understand forgiveness. Forgiveness is not um, about your feelings. Forgiveness is almost like love. Love is a decision, not a feeling. And forgiveness is, is releasing an art where before your f emotions change. <laughs> Still upset about it, but you released it. Amen. Still come in your mind every now and then, but when it comes, you say, oh, no, no, devil, won't play here, won't make space in my mind today. I've already released that. Forgiveness is powerful. Yes. A lot of people say they love you with the love of the Lord, but they're still holding it. They love you with the love of the Lord, but they, they look at you and they, they roll their eyes. They look at you funny, you know. Anybody ever got anybody look at them funny? And you're supposed to be church folks. Hey, Amen. Well, I'm telling you, we got to make sure that we don't fall into that trap. Tell about, yeah, I love you. I forgave you. How long you forgave me? How long did you forgive me? Yes, until, yes you feel it. Just because you're in church. See, in here, we feel like we love everybody. But get outside that door, the demons come. So we got to know how to love people for real. And, and, and I'm going to show you how Jesus did it so we can do it. Some of us in here today love everybody but somebody. Love everybody but this person. Love everybody but, you know, they, you know, uh, I, I, you know, just something about them. What'd they do? Just something about them. <laughs> did they say anything to you? No, no, no. It ain't about me. It was about my friend. I, I know what they did to my friend. <laughs> just something about them. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. No, I don't want to hear it. Mm-mm. Something about them. Some about them. Have you ever spoke to them before? No. Mm -mm, I ain't got to speak. I know. My spirit. I got an intuition. I know. I heard what she did. I, but, 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 but you mad at somebody that you ain't got nothing to do with. It, it, you upset with somebody. Somebody said, well, I don't like him. I don't like him. You don't even know me. You don't even know me. How do you mean you don't like me? If you get to know me, you'll love me. I'm just a teddy bear. <laughs> and so... I don't know. So we got to work on that. And I believe, I believe this is the perfect way to do it, how Jesus dealt with this woman with the outer basket box. Amen. Look what it says here in Luke 7. Luke 7, it says, um, um, oh, 36, one of the Pharisees desired him that he just come. Now look at Jesus now. And the woman, verse 37, and the woman, the woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the meat in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment. This is so expensive oil. The Amplified Bible says, a woman of the town 
who was a, an especially wicked sinner. Well, if you do your research, this was like a prostitute. She came and all, she, they knew what type of woman she was. Now check this out. All of a sudden, and stood at his feet, at Jesus' feet, and behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears, and then wiped them with her hair on her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. And when the Pharisees, and here's the religious people, which had uh, hit, bitten him saw it, he spake within himself, look what they said, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, she is a sinner. In other words, a social outcast, devoted to sin, this is who she was. Why did he say that? Because here's what they was understanding. First of all, uh, they was upset because the oil cost so much. The oil um, in those days was very expensive oil. Now, here's what they said the oil was, was um, how much the oil was. It was enough to pay, to live off of one year of wages. She took one year of wages that was how much that oil cost that she put it on Jesus and rubbed him. And so, two things here the Lord showed me. He said it was very expensive. And where did she get it from? She got it from her profession. She got the money from being a prostitute. But she came into the presence of Jesus. And when you come into the presence of Jesus, you sense his love. And so and she, all she could do was give it and pour it and worship him because you don't know the cost. In other words, you don't know what I did. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the pain I had. I don't want to be like this. You don't know what drove me to this. Everything, but I see Jesus, and I now I'm going to worship him at his feet. And Jesus realized, I know what type of woman this is. I know where she got the money from, but love is unconditional. Amen. He loved her. He loved her and told everybody else, leave her alone because she loved forgiveness, he was releasing forgiveness to her before she even asked. Amen. In other words, he, he was letting her know, I forgive you, because uh, they, these guys it blew their mind, because look what it says here. Because if you keep reading, it says, then the first seed, they, they knew what kind of woman, then Jesus said, Simon, he tried to break it down to him. He said, I have, I have somewhat to say about this. He said, look, he said, there was a certain creditor, you know, that had two debtors. One uh, uh, 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he what? Frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? In other words, here's what he was saying. You know, like today, one, one old, one guy owed five, let's say $500,000. The other guy owed, let's say, 50000 and then the creditor forgave both of them. Which one would love the creditor more, the one who gave the most, who forgiven of the most, or the least? In, a, in, in other words, y'all like y'all understand. Okay, let me say this. What if today um, somebody come up, I come to your house, amen, I come to your house, right, and I said, put all your debts, put all your debts, put all your debts. Put all your debts on your table. Tell me how much it is. And then all of a sudden, you know, then somebody call you, right? Say, oh, I'll, I just paid your debt off from 50, it was $50. I paid it off, you know, uh, you say, oh, well, thank you. But I come there and pay all your debts off. Who you gonna love the most? Me or the one on the phone? Why? Because when you know how much you've been forgiven, you'll love much. 
So he was saying, this woman, she had, see, you don't know how, you don't know, you really don't know forgiveness until you know how bad you used to be. You really don't know forgiveness until you know the many sins that you've been in and God released it and don't hold it against you. And when you understand that, you be like, wait a minute, I know. Nobody else know me, but I know me. I know what I did. I know what I said. I know where I've been. And you mean to tell me he's forgiven me of all my all my sins, and yet he don't, I can come to him without, you know, any sin, doubt, or press, you know, what, what? And so what happened is Jesus blew all their mind that day and showing that I love the unlovable. This woman had no, no, in that day, you, she was not qualified to receive forgiveness of love. But why? Because Jesus is not like man. Some of you, somebody owe you a dollar. And you ain't forgot it yet. They owe me a dollar. We won't forget it. We won't do that. But, but we've got to understand, love is not like that. Yeah. Come on. Let me, let, me, let me dig into it a little bit more. Look what it says. So Jesus, after he told him that, look what it said. He explained it to him down there. He said, he said, look here. He said in verse 47, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are what? Many are what? Forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom... Little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And Jesus said unto her, Thou sins are forgiven. And he set her in the meat, then began to uh, say within themselves, Who is this, you know, that forgiveth sin? They was all upset, but Jesus didn't pay no attention to him. He said, Woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Another translation says, um, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven um, loves little. Right. Another translation says, but whosoever receiveth little, forgiveness loves little. Another translation says, she is forgiven many of many, many sins, so she is very, very grateful. If the forgiveness is minimal, the gratitude will be minimal. See, a lot of us sitting up in here forgot how much God really forgave you. And that's why we don't forgive others, because you don't know how much you've been forgiven. You hold things to your grave. You hold arguments that you had in church. You don't like me because I preach long. I mean, come on, people. We got to understand something. To be like Jesus, you can't have any art on the record. Release it and let it go. Because Jesus did that woman like way, and he said, this is how we're supposed to love. Find somebody who's unlovable and be good and love them and release it. If you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to be like the world, just keep it. The world, Old Testament saints, and world, they don't have to do this because you had to qualify to get my love. But Jesus showed up and said, nope, mm -mm. this is not how you're supposed to be. This is not, we need to forgive. We need to let it go. We need to, we need to forgive people because forgiveness is a part of love. Amen. 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 Somebody said, can you, can you give me another scripture that, okay, look, at, look over here. Since y'all looking at me all funny. Look at Matthew 6 for a second. Let me show you this. Glory to God. Everybody want to be mean. It's time to be nice. It's a season to be good. Be good to one another. Amen. You married and you still holding. Marriage is about fussing sometimes. You know, being married. Tell me something. I ain't never fussed. You ain't even got married then. If you don't have no, you don't have no disagreement, you ain't married. You ain't really matter till you have a hot argument and then everything all right. Amen. You, 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 it don't mean you in sin. No, it means that if you're married and you ain't never had a disagreement, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't married. 
And somebody said, well, I'm dating him now, and he's never showed me anything like that. He doesn't get mad. Don't mind him until he get mad. You need to see him upset. You need to see how he act when y'all have a disagreement. Amen. Do he slam doors? Do he cuss everybody out? Do he bite the dog? What do he do? You want to know how do he argue? Amen. Praise God. You don't want, and for the man, you don't want to marry somebody, and all of a sudden you, you marry somebody, you don't marry Madea. You know how Madea act when she get married. You don't want to do that. You want to check things out. <laughs> Amen. And then after that, can you release it? Then after that, can you talk? And then your mind said, don't release it. Don't let it go. Oh, be mad. Don't cook them nothing. You need to go right in there and cook. And don't put a lot of hot sauce in there. You need to cook. You need, you need to do things that, that, that the devil telling you not to do because that's really showing sure, sure that you, you got it. It took. And so now I'm going to release it. I, I, we are the day. We came to church arguing all the way here. And then we got in here sitting beside each other like ain't nothing wrong. That's love. <laughs> there is about to be a spiritual tsunami. with the breaking news. Uh, let's go first to CNN's Will Ripley. He's monitoring the tsunami warning. Look at somebody tell him the tsunami is coming, 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 the tsunami is coming. What's the latest, Will? Well, we know that a three-foot tsunami has been detected. I'm telling you, the deliverer is on the way. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready! Let's check in with our meteorologist, Jennifer Gray. Uh, Jennifer, what are the forecasters saying? Sometimes things can show up without a forecast. <laughs> Sometimes you had no warning that it was getting ready to rain. You didn't go out with an umbrella. You didn't go out with a raincoat. You didn't know it was going to rain. And God said, that is what's getting ready to happen to you. You're not even going to know it's coming. And they're continuing as we go through the minutes and even hours. But the strongest shaking of the 6.9. A shift is a way of thinking. But it did trigger that tsunami warning. And the highest wave that we've seen has been on the coast. My paycheck, that paycheck days are over. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. No, I'm not qualified for this and qualified for that. But my faith is not in me. My faith is in him. But keep in mind, you could see more than one wave and they could be at various heights. Bad faith. I know we're going to fit him, but go hit about two or three people with a half five and tell them you are carrying a tsunami. Lord, As we go missed. through uh, the next several days and Lord, even weeks, of course, there's your tsunami warning right there. The advisories have actually extended you, and so for the next the couple of hours. Point. We'll continue to see a you're series of waves uh, approaching quality. the area. We may not qualify. And not that you, you live so perfect, I qualify because I know Jesus and the fullness lives on the inside of me. And if the fullness is in me, the fullness can come up and get around me and get on me. I've been through a lot this year. You've been told, if I told you real testimony, you wouldn't understand what I've been through. But now is not the time to complain because it's time to get in the river. It's time to get where God is moving. It's not time to sit there and act like it's gonna always be this way. Trouble don't last always. Many of the afflictions of the righteous. But God said, I will deliver you out of that. I'm walking around with God in me. And every trouble, every situation, every disappointment, every trial, everything that the devil, the God's getting ready to turn that thing around for good. What the devil meant for bad. Look at somebody say, what the devil meant for bad? God is turning around for my good. If you believe that, shout. But I believe I'm talking to somebody who believe in God up in here. 
Somebody who's tired of the drainage. Somebody who's tired of that dry season. They, they ready for some juice to show up, a river to show up, a tsunami to show up. Put your hand on yourself and say, in the name of Jesus, because of the shift, because of the spiritual tsunami, my paycheck to paycheck days are over. Now shout right now, cause it got something has shifted. Something is about to change. You are carrying a tsunami in the spirit. Tsunami is coming, the 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 tsunami is coming. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on, repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong right now. I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.